conversation and that this man never gets to go home. Um, and you have a nice place to live. I saw it. I saw you on with Jen. Uh, so let's talk with about Cheeseboro, Chesboro, however you pronounce his name, because this is actually new information, too. So he is and we didn't even really pay attention to him when we were talking through and we were all on the big set with, with Rachel Maddow and everybody. And we were all talking through the first set of indictments. He was sort of he seemed like a less big player, but now he seems like a big, big, big player. He is writing the memos that are saying, here's how we do the coup. But then he actually shows up at the Capitol. And I do believe he pleaded the fifth when asked in one of the many proceedings, yes. were you at the Capitol? He said, I plead the fifth. What do you make of the fact that he's doing the sort of intellectual plotting of the coup and then showing up at the coup? So, um, one, I do think DOJ is fully aware of this because remember they had the full scope of all of the memos that he had written. Remember the January 6th committee had some, but not all. But we learned from the indictment that Chesbro had or Cheesebro had um, written one more memo that was quite incriminating. Uh, and then the New York Times actually got their hands on it and published um, that. So we have, I do think DOJ is very much on it. I think the fact that he actually showed up on January 6th makes his defense so much harder because it's not just an academic exercise. It's not just, oh, I had some good faith legal <laughs> argument. He's fully invested in seeing this happen. This is not normally what a lawyer might be like, oh, here's some argument, by the way, here's what I think the merits are, or I think it may not fly. You know, that's sort of one thing. But when you're actually there on the scene with who else but Alex Jones, I mean, you know, crazy man. Um, I mean, that is such a terrible thing. I mean, so I think if I were a DOJ, he, if I'm looking at the list of people I want to charge and quickly but put more pressure on them to cooperate, he would be one. Um, Jeff Clark would be another. These are people where charges are, could be so strong and a good lawyer for them, one that's not MAGA affiliated, might say to them, you know what, what side of this do you want to be on? Um, and, you know, you really need to, to work something out. If he, now, given that he is charged in Georgia, his, he's got separate legal potential liability, as you're explaining now, on the federal side. He's got yep. liability in the state of Georgia. Could pleading out in Georgia in any way help him in a federal case? Is he now in a position where he could actually hurt Trump on the federal side and help himself in Georgia? Yeah, so, um, you know, there's no way to cooperate in one without cooperating in the other, and there's no way to plead in one without really pleading in the other. And in, in other words, you either are all in as a cooperator and admitting your liability or you're not. Um, whether, you know, both jurisdictions would require him to plead guilty as opposed to one, is that sort of a, that's really more of a, how the, the technicalities, but I do think, if I were in the federal government, I'd want to match what Fonnie Willis did and because you have your own separate interest. And the more pressure on him, the better. I mean, these are people who try to engage in a coup undermining the de democracy. I mean, this is it, it's, it's so hard to understate this because it's just the worst <laughs> um, or sorry, it's so hard to overstate it because it's just the worst yeah. possible crime you can think of.